It is my greatest honor to present my good friend, Matt Cedillo. So just a little bit about Matt. I actually met Matt when he was performing at my alma mater at California Lutheran University. And when we first met, I was just really um, amazed by how powerful his poetry was. And so after that, um, after me probably bothering him a lot and not being like, how do you write this? What are you doing? All this stuff, we became friends. Um, but this is what uh, Paul Ortiz said um, about Matt. And I think this is a really great example of why Matt should be here and why Matt is a great person to tell us about how we can use poetry as a means of advocacy. So Paul Ortiz says, Matt Cedillo's poetic work is full of history, struggle, tragedy, anger, joy, despair, possibility, and faith in the struggles of the working class people to overcome the forces of capitalism and racism. If Patrice Lumumba, Rosa Luxemburg, Emiliano Zapata, Ella Baker were alive today, they would all be reading and sharing Matt Cedillo's work with their comrades in service of organizing the next revolution. He is truly the poet laureate of the struggle. So I, I love that. I love that. I think it really works well. And um, without further ado, uh, let me introduce Matt. So the way we have this set up is Matt is going to just introduce himself and then go right into some poetry that I believe some of it's going to be from this beautiful book that he's already put out. And then we'll get into some Q&As. All right. Um... That's the, you know, that's a problem when you, when you have like these, uh, when you start doing, thank you so much for having me, by the way, let me, let me start up there. That's kind of the problem when you start, you know, you start doing things, you start getting a little career together, you get these quotes and you have to live up to them. So <laughs> no pressure. All right, here we go. Sundown, Levittown, Fort Apache, Dirty Harry, John Wayne, Blackface, Minuteman, Moynihan, Gone with Wind, Breaking Bad. Washington, Redskin, Confederate flag, the sword, the dollar, the cannon, the scholar, the cavalry, and the Ivy League history as written by lightning as the rising smoke of burning village. The ways and means which victors keep their victims, a frontier thesis and notes on the state of Virginia, extraction, expansion, the winning of the West, Lewis and Clark, Smith and Weston, a circle of the wagon with bloodshed and slave sweat, the crack of the whip, the law of three fifths, the crown of Republic of King Cotton, the intended failures of reconstruction, the housing covenants that greeted great migrations and the same to the Mexicans of poor Mexico. So far from evidence, so close to Monroe Doctrine, to Davy Crockett, to prison industrial complex, a war on drugs is a war on our young. Bloody Christmas, we for madness, 15 to life for four ounces, East Oakland, West Baltimore, South La Brea and Oliver North, Plymouth Rock, Jamestown, the Rio Grande, Stolen Lives. Stone land. Some were born in summer homes and palatial groves where pain was only to unfold from the pages of secret gardens where Redfern grows, but not I. See, I come from the stock of star-eyed astronauts who greet the night sky with big dreams and wide eyes always running down the devil's highway through occupied America on the way back to house on Mango Street and all the books he wants to read. Raised on handball off the back wall of a panaderia born East the River, post Mendez versus Westminster, one generation with red lines and diplomas that were signed at those dreams in that skin need not apply. See, I come from struggle. And if my story offends you, because you made the mistake of seeking your reflection in my self portrait, see, this was made to be about you. Because someone born in the common core, whose reflected faces grace the pages of documents discovered, age to be explored. World world hardships crashed against new shores, New England, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New York, for others pushed off Turtle Island. Aslan, do not call this brown skin immigrant. Child of the sun, son of the conquest, Mexicano blood, running through the veins east side of Los Angeles. Do not tell him it will tongue and song will best be sung. Do not tell me who I am. Because I was raised like you miseducating some of those very same schools off lessons and legends of honest Indians and Christian pilgrims and a nation of immigrants all united in freedom. That isn't until they pulled some my white friend pointed directly at me and said, Scott, I judge you by the company you keep and you spend your time with this. Let's say more stories, 1846. Adventure Uncle Sam, the stick up man, he went back. Show me your papers now, give me your labor, the melting pot. It was never made for the hands to clean it. The American dream has always come at the expense of those who tuck it in. You don't know that. 
They don't teach it. Could write you a book, but you won't read it. So you know what this is about you. In 1492, and the Treaty of Guadalupe in California missions and Arizona schools, these racists that try to race us as we're just kids in cities that bear our names. But you're going to learn something today from Ferdinand to Minuteman, from Arpaio to Alamo, from Bobo Burio, so I can the Indian as it lives in me from May 8th to 1643 and try to bury us. They didn't know we were seeds. Canadian mines, Lino Strike, the Plan de Alla, Mr. Putta, Joaquin Mieta, Las Adelitas, Brown Beresi, Zapatistas, from Richard Nixon, third Napoleon, from Peckinpah to Houston, from Lone Star Republic to Christopher Columbus, all the way down. Down to Donald Trump. We didn't cross the borders. The borders crossed us. Who you calling immigrant? Pilgrim. So those are two poems from a uh, collection here, Mowing Leaves the Grass. Thank you so much. That's actually, the last one's one of my favorites. Um, that's, it's amazing. Um, so that gives you a taste of kind of the, the power of um, a poem like that. So I'm going to start with a, a basic question. So it sounds simple, but I think when we ask simple questions, we kind of get down to the nitty gritty of it. Why do you write? And what purpose does poetry have to you and maybe to society? Well, I write, um, you know, I write for a number of reasons. I write because it's, it's something I'm good at. And I'm, you know, it's really more a question of like what, I, you know, that's a pretty simple answer. I mean, I write because it's what I'm good at, right? But but why do I write about what I write about, right? This is really kind of, I think, I think what the heart of the question is. And uh, the things I tend to write about, I tend to write about social struggle. I tend to write about uh, the inequities that we find ourselves in and, and, and the fact that uh, that they are reversible, that, that these are, these are and, and that they have, they have a point of origin, right? They, they're not eternal. They're not fixed. They're not, the, things have not always been this way and nor do they need to continue to be this way. Right, so I try to write in a way that would would um, would 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 really you know ground us in the the economy and the history uh, from once these problems come. Right, so in a very like that's you know that that's why they're so historical. That's why it's not necessarily just like I felt this way and then like I'm going go on the exploration of my feelings. It's more like which I say that my feelings are absent from these poems. I mean, it talks about like how I felt, talks about my own childhood, talks about experiences I had, but then it takes that experience and it puts it against the backdrop of a wide historical. Uh, you know, of, of a big history, um, so that these things that happen to me also happen to millions of others of people, right? And millions of others, and um, and and it represents a, um, a kind of a historical trend, um, and it, it represents something that, um, you know, that, that 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 has a beginning, has a point of view, has a beginning, and has a middle. It has a a, a, a you know growing conflict. It's uh, it's something. It's an ongoing struggle, and um, but has potentially solutions. I mean, there, there are ways to fight these things. And um, and this this is not like an eternal thing that need it need not be this way. So that's what I try to write for. I write I write for I write for um, you know I write for the present uh, to fight for the future using the past. Speaking of the past, just to make this a little more personal, thank you for that answer. You know, one of my you know most heartbreaking lines I think in that last poem is when the teacher says, "I judge you by the company you keep." Mm -hmm. You know, can you give us a little background on, you know, just a little background on where you're from and kind of how you came to feel this way, that this was something important, that this is something you um, wanted to dedicate your life to? Right, right, right. Well, so that is something that actually happened. The teacher did point, point at me and called me this and said that, you know, that, you know I was, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, he called me this and Said, like I judge you by the company you keep and you spend your time with this you know and it's kind of funny this guy the guy the guy that that that, that was with this guy Scott um Scott uh yeah Scott actually became a poet too Scott Creeley you can look him up he's, he's actually relatively successful um he's pretty successful as a poet so um it's kind of interesting but uh but 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 Scott would like throw like cherry bombs down toilets and stuff like Scott was <laughs> and like these are the stories that Scott won't tell because I'm not like I'm not like throwing him under the bus and it's true I was kind of a I, I was a handful but I wasn't any more a handful than Scott I was probably actually significantly less a handful than Scott because I knew that like you know if I did the thing Scott was gonna do I was gonna go to jail right so that I had that mentality I, I had that awareness um but so Scott could get away with more and, and so and so Scott did get away with more and Scott did do more and then I was the one getting demonized this guy's out here like you know blowing up school property but whatever um Scott's a good guy. I mean, we were teenagers. Just, you know, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to throw Scott on the bus, but that is, that is what happened. Um, and so, you know, I just, you know, just, well, maybe when I throw my life at it, it was just the fact that, 
you know, something I experienced, but it's not just something I experienced, it's something that, you know, you know, millions of people experience. It's something that um that uh that I see, you know, that that that, that is felt on the individual level, but I'm like you just look at the statistics and there's nothing. I'm not. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. I mean, you just look at the world around you. You can see like who's working in the back of the kitchen, who's who is standing in front of the Home Depots, who is working in the fields, who is whatever. And you know, I come from those people. Now, I'm only a couple generations removed from this stuff. I mean, like, and and you know, from in my, my in my direct line, you know. And so, um, and still, and still, even 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 if you don't really, even if you're not in that exact experience, there's still something in this country with like a brown wage. I mean, I found out when I was managing a big five that I was making something like. Five to ten, five to like six thousand less than, than my white counterparts for the exact same job, for the exact same job, and so like that's you know, you'll find this across the board, and so um, to fight for 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 the position of the the group of people I belong to, um, in this in this kind of you know country full of internal colonies and full of you know nations within nations, um, that that's something I want to do. But that's not all I write about. I mean, I write about you know environmental collapse. I write about the fact that like, you know, we're all being robbed blind by, uh, by the capitalist class. I write about a lot of different things, but in these particularly two last poems, um, that's where that commitment comes from. Thank you so much. And I can see a lot of people thinking, I see people speaking and I see people, I think they're probably gonna have a lot of questions. So we're gonna have Matt perform another poem. I'll ask him a couple questions and we'll really get into a small, you know, a small question, but maybe almost a mini tutorial on how to write a poem about advocacy and about something as giant as socialism. And then he'll finish off and then we'll have time for Q&A. So keep all your questions for the end. Um, we'll have a couple minutes for that. So, Matt, if you want to perform another poem for us. Sure. Great. So this next poem is from my upcoming collection called City on the Second Floor. It's a satirical poem, so know that ahead of time, right? <laughs> don't always announce that, but I'll announce it here because I don't want you to get the wrong idea because I don't, I don't want any of you asking me for money. That's really going to be why. <laughs> here, you'll understand once you hear it. All right. The rich will not like you and me. They see an opportunity, they grab it. Reach for the stars and they put them in their pocket. The company stays in the red, but they're backed by the government. Snort the public dime into lines of pure profit. Research and development, the rich, well. They're a different breed. Champagne wishes and caviar dreams, thoroughbred stallions, quarterly matches in the sea, deport horizon, blood diamonds, golden parachutes, silicon, messiahs, feasting on endangered species, served on silver platters and winter palaces, carved from the tips of icebergs, six figure charters, vulture capital, plucking life like an apple from suicide nets, lifestyles of the criminally negligent, but you haven't lived. So you've launched a car into space for no real reason. And that's what I call freedom. The rich, well, here's how it is dollars and cents. Trademark and rent, facts and figures, lines and ledger, derivatives and debt, building the future, increasing productivity, union busting back to the 100 hour work week, trimming the fat, producing monopolies with real money, shortages and bets. And that, my friend, is how the rich stay rich while the rest make poor decisions. It's pure ecstasy. Living the lap of luxury, pushing pharmaceuticals, the markup, the market will bear your bite's altar at a life or death bargain, the gospel of wealth, because it is what it is, and that's all it's ever been. You see the rich, the poor, but they're just like you and me. Two hands, two feet. The sky, the sea, and everything between one heart, the beats, and the time. To make the most of this, you'll find no sympathy. Reaching to these deep pockets, all we ever asked is our fair share. And damn it, that's all of it. So we are on the streets, screaming for peace and justice. We sleep in satin sheets, dream free and guiltless over oceans and tariffs, liquidating pensions and off to bid on porcelain portraits at billion dollar auctions. You know you need us. You know we're selling your secrets. You know so send us DNA kits, watching the puppets on television, debate freedom, free speech, fascism, democracy, we're reaching the earth, punch the ozone and fuel the economy with space stations. Yes, space stations, hydrating the red planet we're gonna survive this lava pit so you got pots and pans we got deeds and plans chopping down rainforest colonizing the moon we're the rich who the hell are you we'll privatize the water supply then copyright the tears falling from your eyes burn it all down what are you talking about the ice caps already melting you want to start some ish eat the rich we're already killing your kids one carbon footprint one gas house emission one oil one naval ship one free trade agreement at a time we'll get away with it too nothing we say or do is ever held against us. Haven't you been paying attention? We're rich. Wow. That's a new one. That's one I haven't even heard. Yeah, yeah. Upcoming on the second floor. 
Well, I'm definitely buying that one. <laughs> All right. Um, man, that one just blew my mind. I need a moment. Um, <laughs> so, you know, this, these next two questions, you know, they're, they're going to be they're kind of self-explanatory because we all know this, right? We've seen our installations, we've heard songs about protests and, you know, they inspire social commentary or, you know, they try to make a point. Um, how does poetry fit in with the other arts as a means of political protest and advocacy? You know, uh, do you feel that, you know, obviously you do because you're doing it, but, you know, on, in a sense of public health, you know, can poetry be an agent of change for public health advocates like us? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, like, if you think about it, like, things, books that are considered to have, like, uh, really, like, changed public sentiment tend to be novels. So, like, they tend to be, like, novels like, um, like, uh, Main Street, uh, that was, was a big thing uh, by uh, Upton Sinclair when they were on the meat industry, you know, that was, that was a big, uh, that was a big, uh, you know, I think it was the name of the book. Uh, Uncle Tom's Cabin, uh, another one that, that 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 really kind of like you know was was big you know circulated in the abolition amongst abolitionists. I mean, that was another you know really uh, a book that really kind of galvanized the public. So that's typically what's thing. But like you know, poetry is in in a way it doesn't have that same kind of thudding effect. You know, I'm just, I'm just being I'm being like technical at this point. It doesn't have that same kind of thudding effect. Uh, effect but what it does have tend to have to is it's, it's more fluid. I mean, because poems are shorter, they can be recited, they can be memorized. Um, they oftentimes are great to open an event. They're times to like really encapsulate uh, uh, what something is. And you know, and there have been poems that that have really galvanized me. I mean, if you're talking about like you know, like for instance, you know, the first two poems I did were were kind of a, a, a you know, they come from a kind of a tradition of like you know, Chicano poetry or from the Chicano struggle. And if you think about uh, the Chicano struggle, I mean, the that 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 coalesces uh, around a poem called Yo Soy Joaquin by uh, by Gorky Gonzalez, who was a uh, who you know was a a very very um, you know, very, very successful organizer, very, very uh, important person in Chicago history. Um, so, you know, yeah, um, poetry can have that can have that same effect. I mean, I know we more traditionally think about like novels or songs or something like this, like, you know, like you know, Woody Guthrie or something like that. But um, you think about figures like Pablo Neruda, I mean, in, in the struggle that he engaged with in, in Chile, and, you know, you think about, uh, um, you know, again, Corky Gonzalez is another example, Langston Hughes and then and the Harlem Renaissance. So yeah, I, I definitely think that the poetry can be something that uh, that uh, that they, they they can they can they they can be a part of something. But I mean, like, but at the end of the day, what really requires organizing and and, and you know, like in, in poetry, um, poetry can can galvanize organizers. It can galvanize organization. It can bring people towards organization. But ultimately, what we need to do is is you know is you know boots on the ground. You know, you meet the things you already know, things you know better than I, because I'm a terrible organizer, because I get so mad when people don't bring the ice or the chairs or whatever. And I'm like, this was not my responsibility. You know, like, what, what, what you, you have one job, and I, I can't, you know, I, I'm gonna go write a poem, I'm gonna write a book, you know, I'm gonna, I, have a, I have a screenplay to work on. <laughs> so. I, I definitely agree with you there. Um, and that's kind of one of, the, one of the reasons I asked, I know it's super self-explanatory, and I don't think we'd be having this if there was a question that it couldn't be. But now that we have confirmation and we have some examples, you know, um, you know, I know you get the you get paid the big bucks by the giant, you know, uh, universities like Cambridge and you know all these different universities to tell people how to write poetry. Mm -hmm. But since you're among comrades. Um, would you be willing to share a little bit with the people in this room how we individually could go about writing poetry about something as big and almost, you know, intangible as socialism and socialist ideals? Um, sure. And I know, yeah. I need a volunteer. Anybody? What should I do this? Right now. Someone must volunteer. Uh, you know. I'll volunteer. All right, I was about to have someone volunteer their friend. <laughs> Who am I speaking to? What? Ken. Yeah. Ken, give me a topic. Pharmaceutical industry. Big Pharma. All right. What are the details? What do you want to say about Big Pharma? Uh, what, is the, what are some of the details you're going to use to make, to make your bigger point? Um, they make too much money. They copyright things that other people have developed, that the government has paid for. They um, create monopolies. They try to influence policy. 
Okay. They make a lot of money off of things that aren't really new. Okay. So the grifters, essentially. Yeah. All right. So what what is the big point though? What 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 is what is what's our call to action? Or what what do you what do you what do you want to see change? Um, what's your point? National nationalize the pharmaceutical industry, so there's no profit making. Nationalized pharma. Okay. Okay. So on. So what we have here, what I do, is I, I create this the style called the three act poem. Right. And this is really 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 good for when you have a uh, for political poetry. I mean, you're, you're you're you know stuff about your own life where there's more gray area. You're not really sure like how to feel. Oh, that that that's a little more difficult, right? But like when you know exactly what you want to say and you know exactly who's to blame and you know exactly what needs to be done. This thing works like a charm, right? Okay, so when you look at it, it has it looks like this: topic, detail, point. Act one, act two. I'm gonna show you in a second. Act three. Now, this I've I've taught as as uh, Daniel pointed out. I've taught at Cambridge. I've taught at uh, UCLA. I've taught at um, I've, other people have taught at Occidental. Um, I've taught uh, at a number of like really you know whatever kind of universities like really you know really celebrated universities, I mean, it me. Um, but I've also taught them at JC, at community colleges. I've also taught them at public libraries. I've also taught it to kids and it never changes because it's really simple and it's really effective and it doesn't have to change, all right? So this is what it looks like. It looks like this. On the one side, you have your topic, your details and your point. On the other side, you have your act one, act two, act three. Now on this side, this is all the what. On this side, this is the how. And the reason you get writer's block and the reason why your brain freezes at a blank page is because you're trying to answer two questions at once. How and what? What am I going to write about? How am I going to do it? Right? And so when that happens, your brain is like a computer. It freezes. And you, can't, you don't know what to do next. Right? So this, this system helps us because it answers the question separately. Answer one question, answer the other question. So once you got your topic, your details, your point, you can now move to act one, act two, act three. And this is the ordering, right? So on this side, you have you on this side you have your topic, your details, your point. And on this side over here, you are going to order your details in order to best make your point, right? So on this one here, it says we got we have pharma, we have the fact that uh, they 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 influence policy, that they're monopolies, that they uh, that they they do funny business with co copyright. Uh, they influence the influence policy and just overall they are grifters, right? Uh, down here on the bottom, we have like what we need to do so people aren't don't die so much is nationalized pharma. Okay, so the, what should Act One be? So Ken, what do you think Act One would be? Setting the stage. Um, they make too much money. They make too much money, right? And Act Two is like, well, Act Two probably should be what the consequence of that, right? Yeah. These people are making money and what, what, what the people are dying, right? Yeah, diabetics are dying because they can't afford their medicine. People skip skip doses, don't get prescriptions filled. Yeah, so diabetics are dying. You know, people can't get you know, can't get the penicillin. I mean, all kinds of people. You know, uh, you know, as, as people with asthma. You know, working class people with asthma living, you know, in neighborhoods that are like more likely to produce uh, asthma are unable to get their inhalers. I mean, there's so many different problems associated that have all, 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 the, all the the real human effect right there, right? So up here, the lavish wealth of the, of the pharmaceutical industry, the 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 the, 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 the disgusting. Um, the disgusting opulence that these people are able to, to have, right? Down here, the human effect, the toll this place based on society. Down here, the solution, right? So now you know that everything that you're going to write in the beginning is going to tend towards setting the stage for like this, this world of like, you know, of, of, of people in like yachts and, and, you know, like conferences and like, you know, all over the world and um, they're going out skiing together and they're doing all these things. And then how do they have all this wealth? Well, they have all this wealth because they own a copyright on this thing that's going to like, you know, that, that, that some child, uh, in, you know, in, in some um, is going to die because they can't get a hold of, right? So in this working class neighborhood is going to die because they can't get a hold of, right? Okay. What's the solution? Well, we need to nationalize, right? We need to, we need to, we need to take this back. We need to take this away from them. So that's how it's done. Can I get another, can I get another uh, um, volunteer? I can go. Jamie. All right. Uh, give me a topic. Sure. Yeah. So I actually, I'll tie this to something that I'm actually working on, um, which is uh, a campaign for environmental justice in Philly's public schools. Uh, so basically the topic is Philly's toxic schools and 
in equity. Okay, so let's talk schools. Uh, details. Sure, yeah. Um, this will start with um, kids are being poisoned every day in their classrooms uh, by lead, asbestos, and mold. Um, teachers aren't escaping this either. Uh, they are um, developing cancer. You know, like we don't have, I mean, we don't have like the actual rigorous evidence to tie that back, but you know, that's, I guess it's a, that's not really relevant to the details of the poem. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, to talk about the health, the health, I mean, mm -hmm. the health is fading. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah okay. um, meanwhile, uh, we have wealthy institutions in this city that, you know, are benefiting from the profits, even though they're nonprofit institutions. Um, and their students and their teachers um, are, you know, they have all these really nice classrooms and, you know, the top education quality, you know, some of the best, best education in this country. And meanwhile, public school students are suffering. Okay. So we got, we got, uh, we got, so, so are you talking about charter schools or are you talking about like what are these? Uh... Uh, I'm talking about like universities. Yeah. Okay. And okay. private schools, but yeah. Okay. Private schools. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, and then what's the point? The point is for universities and large, you know, supposedly nonprofit institutions to pay up and pay their fair share to the, uh, to the school district. Okay. So if I'm you, I'm going to look at top, I'm going to start act one. I'm going to talk about, I'm going to, I'm going to do a little bit of research. I'm going to find out what, uh, what are these, 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 these universities mission statements, mm. right? So we're going to start off with like what these universities say about themselves, right? Because they always say glorious things about themselves. They always say the most ridiculous things about themselves. I've never seen in my life, these, 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 we have such a culture of care and this and that. And then you actually go on campus and they're like yelling at the custodians. It's like mm -hmm. horrible. Right? That's, so like, yep. you know, but that then, has but, literally happened. <laughs> right. So you see the way they talk about themselves, right? So this is what we do. Because we're setting them up, right? So we, we, mm -hmm. we take like, you know, quote them, find little things that they say about themselves, start like getting that, right? Act two, I would start talking about like, okay, well, here's the reality, right? Here's the reality at the, at the, at the schools, right? Um, here's the reality at, uh, here's what's going on in the city. Here's what's going on in the city of Philadelphia. Well, you're out here talking about how great you are. Here's the suffering. And then it's like trying to, and that's where, you know, that's where you're going to heavily load all the, 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 the stuff that you're talking about, all the kind of bullet points of like, you know, of, um, of, of the health decline, people's health declining, people getting sick roofs falling down, you know, kids have got to bring their own toilet paper, I mean, whatever the details may be, right? You, you, you're going you're to list those out there. And at the end, that's comes the call for action. So at, at the very end, the call for action. So in the, in the beginning section, what you're going to want to do is, is you're going to, you're, you're basically saying no up as hypocrites. And then, uh, and then the next part, you're going to set up the, the, the reality. So here's the perception. Here's what you claim. Here's reality. And now here's what, you know, you need to do to live up to your words that we already introduced in the beginning. Mm. Feel that, yeah. Thank you. No problem. No problem. Man, that like if it, <laughs> I wish it would like. I wish I could do that. I mean, I have. I've taken this class. This is why I know it works because I've used it. And you know, like I wish I would have known this earlier. You know, and it's one of those things. Is like it. It works so well. You know, and I. I can attest to that. I write my own poetry, and I can say that this really works. And this is why I want you know, wanted someone like Matt to come here because I myself love to write poetry. And I think once we start tapping into our talents and actually coming at this from all different angles, we need organizing, we need people um, to bring the chairs, but you know, there's also a place for the artist and for art to be able to do that galvanizing and to really get across some complex issues. Like, you know, you can paint a picture that is very moving about kids getting, you know, what is it, mesothelioma because of asbestos or something. It's like, if you've had mesothelioma, blah, blah, blah. I mean, there are so many different ways to do this. And man, thank you so much Matt, for that one. That is, um, if anything, I hope that wherever this is shared, people can really um, take that and be able to use it because we all know a lot about different topics. And if we all could write a poem about each of these different topics, we would have a whole book of socialist perspectives on public health. So yeah, just, yeah. Throw, just throwing that out there. Um, and what, and so, what I'm talking about though, doesn't just work for poetry. This works for essays too. I and mean, this was works for gathering your thoughts to just, I mean, it's based on the essay format essentially, but I mean like, so, this is just, it, it's, it's made a little more artistic in a certain kind of way because it's got a little more bells and whistles, but 
this this can help you write in even more traditional ways too. But but of course, if you can write poetry, I mean, you know, it's, it's the best. And also, I'm terrible. I I always forget the chairs, and I always forget the ice. So I don't want to judge people for forgetting things. <laughs> No, I appreciate it. So I figure we're going to have you uh, kind of finish out with a couple, uh, either a poem or two, whatever you feel like. And then I think that would be a great moment for any type of questions. You know, that gives us maybe about 15 minutes for questions if people want to pick your brain. And um, yeah, how does that sound, Matt? That sounds fine. All right, I'll just do, uh, I'll do just uh, I'll do two more. Cool. All right. Um... So this is the book, Mowing Leaves of Grass, it's out right now. Um, the next book coming out is uh, going to be uh, City on the Second Floor. So that's pretty, uh, that one's a little bit different than this one, um, but, uh, but also good in a different way. <laughs> All right, um, what do I wanna do? What do I wanna do? Uh, I do... I'm the Azzy Ridden Vengeance of Avada Valdez, the best laid plans of Molesta, the reckoning of Santa Cruz, San Isidro, Bisbee, Chandler, Porter, near the blood, sweat, and tears of all that I refuse to forget. I am that unpaid debt. No sidekick, no subplot, no mascot, no ethnic study. The universe I embody. The ground above me, the sky beneath my feet. March in the sky, the last three, the circular calendar, sleep deep in the scattered sea, the past, the future, and the present. In la quiet, all at once, since moment, I'm you, you are me, and we. Our two clenched fists that still lit fire, sacred kept fun, but it's called last fighting Aztec, laughing in the face of death, the blade of El Pachuco, guarding the temple steps, the strength of memory, the promise tomorrow, your soy Chicano, Chicano, soy Elon Nieves. El Chicano Boy, they want anything important. Critical to your rehabilitation for the way in which you entered this world. Read Thomas Jefferson or else get pregnant. Standards and practices. Curriculum instruction, you the product of a public education. You're not erupt, you're like cuffed, face first to pavement like your father, your grandfather, your mother, your nina, your tios, you learn your lessons, it's not personal. It's all you people. Don't get mad. Don't be hurt. Don't make this political. It's economic. Objective. The law of self-interest, we let you in who will, who will uh, let you in who will shelve the wit and wisdom of Ben Franklin, Shelley, Shakespeare, Chaucer, Walt Whitman from the Palmanic starting was miserable, inefficient Mexico to the grand mission, the new world, the noble race you fought, you lost. You didn't get to find this. It's not racism, it's progress, providence, and God willing, you filthy Mongols, it is just the way it is. Look at you. I don't see color. I see labor. See cops and robbers, guards and convicts, institutions, corrections, schools that look like prisons, cage, apartments, where the cost of living, the cost of being brown is high as wage theft and the rent. Forget your savage tongue will teach you to bust. American love, spoon feed you, spicks, freedom of speech. So take a joke and speak to authority. I'll show you who you are in a book. You'll believe it. So I said it. Now you read it. Who you question the can, the classics, Lowry, Kerouac, walk out on the great white brilliance of Garfield, Roosevelt, Lincoln. Now listen, because it's important the universe is a muralist. The cosmos. Our self-portrait, starring Curandera, Lanzante, a poet laureate, a stylist, a mechanic, the body or dandy, cruising the rings of Saturn to travel to the Torres, Carrasco, tearing the curtain in Union Station, Joaquin, returning triumphant, marching through halls of Tucson, mowing down leaves of grass, forget what women, this is our labode dedication of Frida, Selena, Cantiflas, Luis Rodriguez, Vadez, Suana, Sandra, Anzandua, the mighty Quinn to all that we are and all that we've been through, lifetimes and timelines, galaxies and dimensions of pride, pain and resistance, and gothic are the solar showers and the days of living music when the people of the sun were dancing to the tune of Valenzuela and la luna was a calavera as the ancestors welcome in the future to circular calendar, so I am you. You are me, sitting at a desk, looking to the stars, searching for the end till poem there began. It always was, and forever shall be. And uh, I guess I'll do one more, or, or, or we can go into Q&A. That's, that's fine, by the way. Oh, one more. <laughs> one more? All right, one more. All right. <laughs> Let's do one more. All right. <laughs> Let's do one more. Let's do one more. Um... All right, I'll do this one. I'll do. Okay, I'll do this one. I grew up on. Oh, wait, wrong about. I was born on the east side of Los Angeles, across the tracks from abandoned steel industrial petrified forests. Across the steps, a giant green tarp to customers and gossipers, our abuelitas, from rays of sun and the bombs of birds. They spoke Spanish, sold mangoes, papayas, and cherries, my favorite. As a child, I can never quite make the connection between the broken empty bottles across the steps and the broken empty men poured out the rust factories from across the tracks. So my cousins and I would gather and throw rocks of dirt aimed directly for the head. And the men would yell back something like, what do you kids know about life? And we yelled back, 
Take that, drunks. That was messed up. That's how it was, growing up. The valley climbs up in older Mitsoto. El Sereno, in the 1950s. My mother's father, technician by trade, by birth a prince among men. In the backwards kingdom, that held him back. That treated him different from the radiance of his unapologetic brown skin, raised a family of six on a single income. There is hard fought genius in me, older than my mother's womb. December 18th, 1981. After months of fear and absence, my father makes his return. My aunt moves to the hospital bed. She does not want to see you. You know what you did. It'd be best for everyone if you were just to leave. My mother holds her newborn, her only begotten son. There is a pain in me, older than my father's blood. As a child, I can never quite make the connection between his fingers around my throat and the anguish in his chest, a suffering older than my father's bones. His father's whiskey. Grandfather's short temper, long lived legacy to time. History does not care to remember because beatings are not fit for scrapbooks and genealogy of shame rarely make their way to the oral tradition of campfire. There is a burning in my heart. The time cannot trace. Moved out from my father's, the suburbs treat me different. One day in the workforce, I told my boss, last night I met a woman. Beautiful and intelligent ass, where at Boyle Heights was that, the side of Los Angeles, ass incredulous. You met an intelligent woman in East Los Angeles? I wanted to slap the cavalry from the smirk. Beat. The manifest destiny out of his name badge, but needing a paycheck, I stood in the weakness of silence, the pain and anguish of generations long past alive and sickened in my chest. There is a shame attempted upon us, older than the tongues of bigots. Walked off job, marched off lot, fist up for the cause, because in a world that has told us no, that has told us different, I have chosen yes. Yes, I'm Chicano. Yes, Mexicano. Yes, indigenous. I brown skin and bleed red. Yes, unafraid and unashamed. My passion, my potential, my intelligence. Yes, the fire in my chest. Look into my eyes. You could feel its strength. And yes, as a matter of fact, some of the most radiant, gifted, talented, beautiful, intelligent women I have ever met reside on the east side of Los Angeles, just across the steps from the streets where I was born. Yes, I am all of this and more. I, like you, am made of stars. You, like me, so full of pain, are brimming with genius. Listen to no one would make you feel different. Thank you so much, Matt. Now, I suppose this begins our Q&A part of um, everything, but really quick, I just want to encourage everyone to buy this. So Matt, how can people go buy this? Where can we find you? When can, where can we look up more stuff? How can people go buy this book? Um, you know, you can go, Google, uh, if you Google it, you can find it, but, but don't give Jeff Bezos any more money. He doesn't need that. Let me, uh, let me, let me find the link for you. It's, uh, Mowing Leaves of Grass, and it's Dio. I'm going to send you directly to the, to the, um, to the, what do you call it, to the, uh, to the, uh, to the, uh, to the press. Yeah, you want, you want to support, uh, Flower Song Books as well. They've got a lot of other great authors, and, uh, they're doing a lot. Um, in terms of, uh, you know, in terms of getting people published and, and getting people out there with, a, with, with collections of poetry, um, both, uh, you know, people who have been doing this for a while and also, you know, first time authors. So that's where you can get the book. It's at Flower Song, um, on the Grass. Perfect. And so now I guess whoever feels like asking a question, please don't be shy. This is a good opportunity if you have any burning questions about it. Um, great opportunity to ask a uh, pro.
I have a question for Matt. Um, any thoughts about the revolutionary potential of slam poetry? Um, if more revolutionaries do slam poetry, uh, you know, like, uh, slam is slam's an art. You know, it's, it's an art form. It's a craft, but it's like fire. It can be used for all kinds of reasons. Um, so uh, I wouldn't say that uh, slam is any more or any less inherently revolutionary than than um, than breakdancing or or than uh, ballet or or than uh, I don't know crocheting. I mean, like you know, if if a, if a revolutionary is doing it, a revolutionary brings that revolutionary content to it. It'll be revolutionary. So what slam needs is more revolutionaries in it. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, the form is the form and, uh, and and that's that. But, you know, it's that content. It's that, what, what are we talking about? What do we care about? And this is a big thing I teach in my, in my oh. workshops is that there's a difference between when people say like, you gotta find your voice. They also mean your passion and what you care about. No, your voice is your technique and your skills and how you hone your skills. And that stuff's very important. Developing your style is incredibly important, but your substance, the things you care about, the, the way in which you want to make the world a better place is a separate and distinct question. It's not the same, right? And so you develop your style in order to better deliver your substance. You, you, you sharpen your tools so that you can better achieve um, the change you want in, in the, to see in the world. You know, get better at, at telling the truth than the pharmaceuticals are at telling lies. You know? Thank you. Now, Matt, I think we have a, a little bit of a problem. I think uh, Martha went to go look at it and buy it, but it says uh, sold out on your uh, on the link we have there. So, man, <laughs> Edward, I'm trying to make them money. All right, um, let's see. Uh, you can send me money and send me your address. I'll put my email in here, and we'll do it that way. I'm trying to help them out. Like, ah, oh, oh, Jesus. All right, I, I believe it. No, I believe it. I believe it. <laughs> I so think Karina just said, hi, Martha. Sorry about that. Enjoyed this. Thank you so much, Kaffa, for, or no, that's someone, someone else. Hi, Martha. Sorry about that. You can also message Matt Cedillo on Facebook, and he'll send you a copy. And yeah, there's yeah. also his email. Yeah, so uh, my email or, or just message me on Facebook. It'll pop up my, my little, you know, whatever, and then we'll communicate. Uh, and, uh, and, and we can set it that way, you know, uh, reach out to me and, and I can send you direct. I got like, I got like 50 on hand. So I, 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 have, some, I have some stuff. So he might even sign it for you. I will sign it for you. I will, <laughs> I will it, so, um, so I say it's a better deal with me, but like, I didn't, you know, I just, you know, I figured like I, I should, I should support my press, but, uh, if they're not going to support me by staying in stock. Then, you know, <laughs> give me the money. <laughs> some more questions for Matt. Let's see if what we have out here. I see some clapping. Well, I have a question about your next book coming up. I know that you said it's a little bit different. You want to tell us a little bit about that and kind of what you're hoping to to see, or like what we what we can look forward to seeing uh, with that book. Well, I think that in many ways, Mowing Leaves of Grass is very much like an ethnic studies book. And it was marketed to a lot of people who are involved in ethnic studies struggle. And it's very much a history book. It talks about things that have happened, things that are continuing to happen. And it looks at a you know particular demographic and it's very much a kind of a response to a lot of what was going on in the Trump era, a lot of the, the, the direct attacks on people of Mexican descent and, and what that men's psychological war was waging. And so that, that's kind of what Mowing Leaves of Grass is. It's very much uh, a historical kind of little it's a time capsule, right? And, and hopefully that it'll be as, as time goes on. At this point, I think I sold like almost, I'm coming up on 3000 copies sold. So for a poetry book, that's a lot. But, um, but you know, the, 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 the idea is for it to become like a, you know, a, a classic of its period, right? That's my, that's my hopes, that's my dreams. Um, City on Second Floor is a little different though. City on Second Floor is, is more of a, a Marxist geography type book. It's more about how cities are laid out and, and why these cities are, 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 you know, it's, it's about, you know, it's about the exploitation of workers, but it's about the exploitation of workers in place, in time, in whatever, not just theoretically. It's like, no, here's the school. It's built this way. It's pointed this way. It's, the, it's this, it's the very architecture of these places is set up for your exploitation, right? The, the, these things you take for granted, these boxes you move into one to the next um, are actually set up uh, to, to just, just rob you of your time and energy, right? So, 
that is uh, that's what Sea on Second Floor is all about. It's it's really about that. It's really about um, it's really you know I guess what I guess it's kind of the, the trendy term is called Marxist geography, but it's really just about how the very cities we live in are are set up for capitalist exploitation. And so yeah, that that's that that's what that one's about. And Karina, who who was uh, who helped very helpful here, uh, gave a way to contact me. Uh, actually, did the uh, design for the book cover. So thank you, Karina. They are quite the duo, kind of a power couple, if you ask me. I love it. Uh, we have a question from Jim Russell. Jim? Hi. I think um, you were sort of getting into it in the last things you were saying about Marxist geography. But uh, the question is, um, do you consider yourself a socialist? And if you do, what do you mean by that? Well, I would consider myself... Um, I would consider myself a historical materialist, to put it that way, right? And so I, and I'll tell you what I mean by it. Um, to say I'm Marxist, to call myself a Marxist, and I know you got socialist, but just to, to want to clarify this thing first, and I'll get to this next thing. Um, to, 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 to start off here, I got to start off here with the, with the, with the, with the question of Marxist. To say I'm Marxist means that I, I agree with all the same conclusions that Marx came to. And I agree with many of them, but at the same time, Marx is looking at a different set of conditions than I'm looking at, right? I'm looking at a world that is different uh, because the technology we operate is different. Uh, the role, the, the, the power balance between nations is different. Um, I just, <laughs> it's a different time, right? So I wouldn't, I wouldn't chain myself to something that was written in the 1800s. I just wouldn't do that. But I do have that, I do try to like maintain that same kind of outlook. Like I look at the economy and look at the, where does, at the, at the base of this, where does this start, right? Well, you know, it starts, it starts with the, you know, what is at the center of all these things, right? What is the center of human life? What, what, what is bringing all these different elements together, right? And that's the economy, in my opinion, right? Um, so that, I, I would start there. So that's what I think about the world. I look at the world and whether I think that like, I look out and I see like, okay, the economy is the center of, of everything. Now, whether I think like, and this is an uh, economy set for exploitation that's bad, or I think of this is an economy set for exploitation, how do I get in on it? Whatever, that's what I think. I look out in the world and I see, the economy is a central uh, the central feature. Okay, it, it is a, it is the center of things of which you know all these other features come out of. Okay, then there's like what do I advocate for? What do I think? How do I think she should be done? And so yeah, I would say I'm a socialist, or, or you know I would say I'm a communist. I would say that I'm you know I'm for the abolition of private property. I am for the common ownership of of the social good. Absolutely. And I think that's the only moral stance to have once you have a kind of clear understanding of what's actually happening. Once you, once you really get what's going on, once you really understand how these people that we were talking about the pharmaceutical industry earlier, we talked about people in Silicon Valley, the oil executives, once you really understand uh, their relationship to the rest of us, um, that's really the only moral position to have that, that we should, you know, that, that, we should, that we should abolish prior property. That was a, that's a good answer to a hard question, I think. Um, I think we have a question from Jonathan Ross. He mentioned in the chat, I write songs. Any thoughts about the poetry of songs? So he has his hand up. I don't know, Jonathan, if you're still here with us. So so for songs, uh, it's a little bit different than the poems, right? Because the poems, I, I got the three act structure, but songs have a returning verse, right? They have a returning verse and chorus, right? So what I would do with songs, but it's, it's still very similar, right? So you, you, what you do is like in the in the first verse, so if you think about it, like, let's think about it, like a really simple song that's like really well written. So like uh, the Beatles yesterday, right? Um, there's a delay in the revelation in, in, the, in, in, in yesterday. It starts off, he starts talking about like, he's got these problems and uh, he had less problems yesterday. And he wants to go back to yesterday, but he has not told us what these problems were in the first, in the first uh, verse. Then he hits the chorus and then all of a sudden now we know, oh my God, he's lost his love. And so he's so sad about that. And then, then it kind of expands on that. So that is kind of like what I would do in terms of songwriting. That's the kind of thing I would advise is, is, is that kind of like, uh, you know, is to, is to, you know, world build and then, and then, uh, and expand. Cause otherwise you have nowhere to go, you know, otherwise you're just like repeating yourself. Um, and then, and then that way, when you're, when you do more change, when you do changes in your, in your verse, um, then the chorus takes on new meaning every time it appears. Right. And so that's, that's pretty powerful. So that, that, that'd be like what I would think. Very helpful, appreciate it. No problem, John. 
we're coming up on the hour. I think if you have any final questions, speak now or hold your peace or, you know, email Matt if you have more questions. Um, you also run a couple Facebook pages. I think, you know, you could always catch in there more opinions if you like what Matt's saying. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, I just want to say there's something, you know, we can talk about socialism, talk about Marxism. So it, it is because I am, it is because I've, I, I have been in, in and out of Marxist organizations for the last like 15 years or whatever that I even think this way, you know, in terms of like my approach to art that, that I'm able to think about like, okay, what is, what, what is the base thing that I'm looking at here? And like, what are the things that are going to grow out of it? And like, blah, blah, blah. So to think about things that this, that this kind of like, that that comes out of years of, of, of Marxist training and just looking at like base and superstructure and all this kind of stuff like that. And just trying to apply it to like, you know, how I write poetry. Thank you. And now for the plug for SCAFA. Um, I think everyone here is probably oh, familiar with. Uh, in, in terms of the Facebook group I run, I run it along with uh, with along along with uh, Karina and, uh, and our friend Ernesto. We run a, a page called Telahagua, which is, just has all kinds of like news and views from from uh, from uh, kind of a Chicano's perspective. But you know, but it's still very much, very very much rooted, very 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 much rooted in that kind of uh, materialist outlook, very much rooted in that kind of like history and the economy. That's what we said when we set out before that we were going to like understand the world by examining history and economy, and we were going to take a direction from La Lucha. We were going to take a direction from the, the, the people's movement. So that's what we do. I love it. I love it. You guys do great work out there. So I think everyone knows about SCAFA, but if you want to have more events like this, please let us know. You know, this was the first of an event um, you know, socialist perspectives on public health. And um, I think this was a great way to um, to have it go. I know that I don't know too much about the next um, the next uh, event we have going on, but I'm excited about it. And um, I hope that every single one of you um, can make it. And um, I know that there's some collection of emails going on, um, but uh, Martha, I'm not sure, or Ken, I'm, I'm not sure who could speak to this, maybe Jamie, um, but we would love to, to get your information and be able to contact you and um, further, further interact with you. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Matt. If you want to get notices about sessions in this series or about SCAFA in general, uh, please send me your email address, with, which, which will indicate your consent to continue to receive emails, there will not be a lot of them. These events are gonna occur about every two months and SCAFA gets slightly busy around the time of the American Public Health Association annual meeting, which is usually in November. Um, there, there's not a lot of business. The, uh, the, next, the next session is, I believe it's April 11th, Susan Reverby talking about the life of Alan Berkman who was a revolutionary physician, um, worked with Prairie Fire, which was a, uh, associated with uh, what was left of Weatherman, spent time in jail, and then came back and became a, an HIV researcher. Um, our June session will be a panel discussion about the Lincoln Collective from the early 1970s in New York, which was a revolutionary group of physicians who were in training in New York City, um, that some of you, that, that those of you who are old enough to know about it have heard about, but it, um, it's interesting to learn about and interesting to see what we can learn from that experience and apply to the events of the 21st century. Thank you all very much for coming. And thank you, thank you. to the organizers, um, Danny and Jamie. I well, think you can. Thank you. Yeah. Go catch